About 118 years ago, New York City acquired one of its most famous landmarks known today as the Arch. The New York City landmark is located right in Washington Square Park. The Arch was originally built in 1889 out of wood for the centennial of George Washington's presidential inauguration. In the early 1890s, the Arch was moved closer to Fifth Avenue, where it was then redesigned by Stanford White and built out of marble. The design for the Arch was based on the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, France. The sculptures were later added during the redesigning of the Arch, and they weren't completed until the late 1910s. The first statue displays Washington as commander-in-chief and was built by Herman McNeil around 1916, while the second statue displays Washington as president and was built by Alexander Sterling Calder around 1918. Until 1964, Fifth Avenue would run through the arch. Because of how the park was becoming to be for the village residents, the park was redesigned and closed off to traffic. Recently in 2006, the arch was restored to how it used to look from the late 1910s. The arch is still standing strong, even with all the street performers that can be found around the arch. One person that you can find here every week is Joe Mangrum. He brings his things here at the park to make sand art on the ground. He works on it from morning until night, letting it grow around 20 feet in front of the arch. Everyone comes by to check out what he does, because it's unlike anything else that you may see here. I started making art in Washington Square in order to communicate and excite people about art, surprise them out of their everyday sort of walk through the park and uh, give them something to look at. Uh, I got into sand painting after a long time doing installation art and ephemeral works uh, about seven years ago and uh, I've been making steadily sand paintings ever since. Well, I've been creating all these sand paintings. I've done about 550 of them, of them now. Nearly all of my work is improvised from the very beginning. I, uh, my sort of motto is plan to improvise. What's important to me is being close to my wife. And, and if she were working somewhere else all the time, then we wouldn't spend near the time we do together. I've come and stood on the sidelines and watched a lot, but now I'm getting into learning the material. So I'm just basically apprenticing with him on the sand paintings. I greatly respect that this is his work, so he has created a lot of content over the years with this work, and so I'm thrilled to just be handling the material, learning a lot of the technical aspects. Pouring the sand with your hand and learning to close off your hand so you control the line. He makes it look very easy, actually, but it's a very uh, skilled technique. If you watch Joe, he's extremely confident with his line. He makes a decision, even if he veers off at a certain point, he'll correct that line, but he does it in one fell swoop, and that's definitely the sign of somebody who's very, very confident in their line. I never make mistakes. Never, ever make mistakes. <laughs> I start with several colors of sand, start laying the colors down, pour them right through the palm of my hand, and we'll, uh, the, the design sort of starts to talk to you and tells you what it wants to be and you'll really just react to that over the course of the day and I'll spend six to eight hours creating a, a piece that might measure anywhere from 15 to 25 feet. My process is sort of wanting to expand into different mediums and create sand on panel work, constantly expanding into like three-dimensional realms and other things. 